All right, finally back with another project from lizardlandscapes.com. We've got a fake rock volcano here. This is a very easy project to do, sort of similar to uh, Stonehenge as far as the difficulty level. But whether or not you're creating this for a gecko or tarantula or a school project, uh, I think you'll find the techniques in this video somewhat easy uh, and realistic to accomplish. I wanted to try to get away from the classic perfect cone you always see with a model volcano. Got some hopefully realistic looking lava there. And uh, I've got a little hide for if you're creating this for a gecko, they can easily access without having to go up through the top. But uh, yeah, fake rock volcano. And here we go. If you're building this, you want to wear one of these. It's a little dust mask. It'll protect you from the dust from the polystyrene and the grout. What I'm doing here is measuring out on a piece of polystyrene. It's a styrofoam you can get at the hardware store. It's basically insulation. I'm going to use these little nails as a way of uh, holding these pieces in place. Now, usually I use glue and actually later on I'll end up using glue but little nails stuck into polystyrene uh, will enable you to be able to change your mind as far as the look of the structure as to where the pieces are going to be. So it can give you an indication if you want to switch uh, the placement of certain pieces uh, chipping away at a piece here to make it look more organic and rock-like. See there, I've got quite a few pieces basically forming a uh, cone shape. Gotten rid of the base now, and I'm just going to start gluing these pieces together using Loctite's power grab. And then I'm going to start building up the landscape with just random pieces of polystyrene. And what I ended up doing is have part of the volcano extend further than another side. Again, trying to get away from that uh, perfectly symmetrical cone you always see when people build model volcanoes. Using some packing material, leftover packing material here, just chipping away at it to make it look more like rock. And on the website, I've got a list of uh, the materials it takes to create this project. Filling in a gap there, a little opening, you'll find a whole bunch of these. There's a large one there, filling in that. You want to fill those in because one, it looks a little ridiculous, and two, you're going to be covering it in grout. So you want those gaps filled up. I'm trying to break away some pieces here of the opening of the volcano. Using more packing material, gluing that on, trying to get rid of that flat plane that was created by that tri or triangle. Gluing on some smaller pieces to just make it look more organic and tearing off other pieces make it look more like rock. Now this is if you're going to create this for a lizard or tarantula. I'm going to create a little opening so that the lizard doesn't have to always enter and exit through the top of the volcano. Now we're on to the grouting stage. I've got some non-sanded grout mixed with water. I'm going to mix this together and you've got a consistency that's not as thin as water. You can see how it's flowing down the structure there. You don't want this too thin because then it starts to crack, which is not the end of the world, and all you have to do is really just add more layers. But putting on a layer on the top there, see it's totally covered using some leftover gray grout that I had from the castle. Make sure you turn this over and get the underside. For the second layer, I always try to add a little bit of acrylic paint just so it's a different color so you can tell where you've been, where you haven't been, in case you get called away from the project. 
Doesn't matter which color it is because I'm going to end up painting this sort of a dark gray black anyway. So I turned it over, got to get the underside of that. And you can tell by the third layer, which is what this is, it's really starting to look a little bit more like rock. And mixing together some extremely thick grout here. So very little water. Trying to simulate the lava flowing down the volcano. I could have created this lava with just pieces of polystyrene glued in a certain way, but I uh, got a little lazy and just wanted to see if this method would work. You can tell the thickness, it's not so thick that it won't run, but it's not too thin that it just gets away from you and uh, completely runs down the mountain without you being able to control it. And you're going to try to smooth out a little bit with a knife. You want to kind of almost running over as if it's about ready to spill out over the table. If you go online and do a search for pictures of lava, very beneficial to try to get the, uh, the look of it. Using the poor man's paint gun here, got a water bottle, a little bit of water and some very dark gray acrylic paint. Could also be called the poor man's airbrush. And what I'm doing here is painting um, in layers the lava flows using the first layer a very light yellow. Try to simulate that extreme hot uh, magma. To do the dry brush technique as a way of adding layers to this lava. You use orange and basically you're getting rid of most of the paint on a paper towel or rag and then painting, uh, in this case the lava, texture of whatever you're painting will pull off a little bit of the paint left over on the brush. You can see there with the undercolor still showing through of that very light yellow that it's starting to look more like uh, lava and just continuing to create more layers of color, in this case a very dark red. And eventually you want to get to where you're using black. Again, if you go online do search searches for lava, um, when lava starts to cool, it uh, turns black. And just adding some more detail here with uh, just a very small brush. You can always go back in and add a little bit more detail as far as uh, the layers are concerned. It really isn't that important that one layer is on top of another. In this case, I'm putting in more glowing embers. So really starting to look like hot lava flowing down a mountain. And here I am fixing some of the mistakes I made with getting some orange paint on the rest of the structure, just using black paint to correct that. And I'm going to try to accentuate the opening of the uh, volcano using the exact same colors. So I got a base of very light yellow, using some orange, and then putting on a little bit of black, try to break up those colors so they don't look so muddy. Using the dry brush technique here again, you got some orange just brushing it over the uh, structure to bring out the texture. And here I am going a little too far with that technique. So looking like hot lava now, you got to seal it. You don't have to seal it if you are just creating this for a school project. If you're creating this for a lizard to live on, you want to make sure you seal it four layers of a non-toxic sealer, in this case I'm using acrylic. As a last stage I'm going to sprinkle fine grain black sand to give the lizard traction. And there you have it, Fake Rock Volcano. Be sure to visit the website for a list of uh, materials it took to create this structure.